Thank you for joining us today. I'm Craig O'Neill with Auto Text Me. With me today is PJ Leslie from Techmetric and Chris Cloutier, the CEO of Auto Text Me, my boss. And we're going to be talking about our awesome partnership with Techmetric and Auto Text Me. I'd like to go ahead and just kick this off by actually giving everyone a chance to introduce themselves briefly. Uh, Chris, I'm going to start with you because you're my boss. Thanks, Greg. That's probably a good idea. Well, it's the paycheck to keep rolling in. So. <laughs> yeah, he does. And then he doesn't want me to make a snide comment about him. Um, thank you, uh, PJ, for doing this with us. I'll say Techmetric, great partner. Um, I think there's going to be a, a lot of shops that are using the combination of the tools and uh, hopefully a lot that are looking to use the combination of tools. One of the best integrations we have. Um, fantastic partners. Uh, I can't brag on you guys enough about your support, about your mission, about your values. I think they're very much in line with our company. And I think that's why uh, things work really well with uh, us in, in moving forward. So thank you, PJ. And thank you, Craig, for hosting this again. I think we have some good stuff that we're going to show in this webinar. Thanks, Chris. PJ? Yeah, um, hard to follow that, but thank you for the kind words. Um, uh, yes, we, we do have a good partnership um, uh, uh, with Auto Text Me. It's, 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 uh, we'll go into it later, but one of the very, very few companies that we do have two-way integration with just because uh, we were joking. It's just you do business with the people that you like, and, and we like you guys. We trust you guys. You, you run a, a great operation. You come from the industry just like us. Uh, uh, High-level introduction of me. My name is PJ Leslie. I'm the Director of Business Development uh, for Techmetrics, so I mostly deal with our uh, larger uh, enterprise clients, franchises, larger multi-shop operations, and also integration partners as well. Um, so those like um, Auto Text Me, uh, where we want to uh, work true partnerships. That is my job. I've been in sales for uh, just over 20 years now, um, and I've known the co-founders of Techmetric for about 12 or 13 years. I've uh, been friends with them for a long time, and lo and behold, they asked me to come in and help uh, spread the good news of Techmetric uh, to uh, potential users. So yeah, I'm happy to join. Excellent. Thanks. Craig, I, I do want to point out one thing that's a little bit different um, in this presentation is my background. I hope that uh, everybody knows this. It isn't a dingy garage. It is actually a very nice, I think PJ paid a nice compliment earlier. He said, very nice painting. I did not paint that. This and My kids did not paint that either, Craig. I think that's just worthy. Like that was professionally done. I oh. think at like uh, a Walmart, I think is where I bought it from. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. That's all I want to say. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, it looks looks wonderful. And I, I wanted to mention this too, and I'm glad you guys both did because this partnership does matter a great deal to me. We've enjoyed a lot of mutual clients and through the development of this integration, I've just seen it grow better and better and better. We have the mind, we have the heart, we have the soul for this industry. And what we have with our products is the form where all the passion of this, this stuff really takes place. And I'm going to share my screen now and we're going to take a look at several of the integrated features. There's going to be several things to discuss on here, and I want to keep this conversational among our panel as we move through this, because we are on the same mission. Guiding everything that we do here is the emphasis of bringing technology that can be leveraged in a way that enhances the professional image of the auto repair industry. And I feel that we really capture that and make that easy. Working in one solution, working in one piece of software, Everyone likes to do that. What we've done with our integration, I feel that's worth noting, is it often feels like you're in one system. You're in one web browser. You can have a tab or split screen setup for both things. And the actions that you take in Techmetric or in AutoTextMe are reflected largely in either system as you move through, reducing a double input, if you will, for service advisors and technicians. It's busy at the counter. We don't want to get, you know, tied down doing things twice. It's a question we all get periodically. I'm going to start with an appointment. And feel free to chime in at any point here, guys, too. On, on When it comes to taking appointments in the shop, I want to start one here. I'm going to do this right from the Techmetric calendar. And this is a fun piece for me to show because the way this integrates, I'm not going to do a 5.30 a.m. appointment, actually. I'm going to do a little bit later. We'll go in reasonable time. I'll make this appointment for myself. I'm going to go quickly through some of these screens as I, I'm expecting a lot of our viewers are already familiar with Techmetric and Auto Text Me to some capacity. If you do get questions, uh, I go through this, you want to know more, go ahead and speak up. We'll uh, 
we'll answer some of those questions here. This appointment's created. And once you've done this inside of TechMetric, it's already going to be here for me and auto text me. There I am as that appointment right here. This is a instant integration. The speed really matters. Some of us have come from legacy systems. Uh, I've used some old shop management systems in my business. Uh, and Chris, I'm not sure what some of your legacy systems looked like either in the past, but mine, mine, uh, we, we had other integrations and in other software in the past where it was sometimes like a 10 second refresh rate. Absolutely. And some of the older, and you know, we're not going to call anybody out as you know, yeah. uh, you know, that's just not what we do. It's not our style, but absolutely. I think with two cloud-based systems, it's funny. I posted a blog on cloud-based systems mm -hmm. and got a lot of feedback that, uh, now cloud's just a couple of servers sitting across uh, in another state. Now the true power of the cloud allows you to scale and do a lot of things that uh, that you shouldn't do anymore. And I think APIs are a good way to talk. So the instantaneous two-way communication before b between both platforms is absolutely due to both you know, residing in cloud and, and robust environments. And, and Chris, you're 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 speaking about it even uh, your your education, your knowledge on it is far more than mine. But this is literally talking about, you know, people ask me all the time, well, what, is it, what does it mean that TechMetric is a cloud-based system? What does it mean that it's web-based? What if the cloud floats away? That's actually a real question that we get asked about once a month. <laughs> um, and, you know, people, people don't understand, it, to dumb it down to the simplest of terms, yes, it is additional servers, but these are, we're talking about buildings of servers that allow for that scalability very quickly, automated updates, automated uh, backups, you know, uh, uh, welcome to Houston, Texas, where it floods, you know, we, we've had like 10 uh, uh, 200 year floods in the past 20 or 30 years. And I think they may need to rename that 200 year flood. Um, but that being said, um, multiple clients that lost their data, um, mm -hmm. uh, things weren't backed up off site and so forth. Um, all of that stuff becomes non-existent. So uh, instead of something having to be manually done inside of a shop, it's done automatically. It's done um, uh, from uh, wherever, right? Ours is redundancy, multiple coasts of the United States. God forbid something did happen. It's backed up multiple times and it's all there at your fingertips. You never have more than five minutes at risk, right? Backed up every five minutes. That's great. And, and it's very hard to do that with legacy systems, but I'm glad that you brought that up because that is actually a question I get asked all the time. Oh, all the time. You know, we, I, my shop, we had the server sitting in the back office, sitting there, old machine sometimes as it, as it goes through the year after year after year. We had an IT service we had to pay for backup, offsite backup, and that was an added cost. That was not. Yeah, so. my, my team backed up our server when I walked back there and said, hey, have you backed up the server? And it was supposed to be done every single week at a bare minimum, which still meant that I had six or seven days uh, <laughs> at risk at any time, and it was still forgotten. Yeah. So all of that goes away. Uh, good points. I'm going to check in this appointment. This is a neat part of the process here. A lot of a lot of uh, users of auto text me are familiar with the way the appointments are handled, how the customer gets that uh, appointment confirmation. This is starting to bring in the customer communication piece, uh, communicating with our clients and setting the expectations for the visit is obviously one of the goals both of us strive to achieve by giving the customer that text notification right out of the gate. As soon as you make that appointment in tech metric, they do also get an automatic reminder. The client can then confirm that appointment before they check in for the visit. And this is where I have some fun with the integration because you can customize your statuses and workflow and auto text me so heavily. There's a myriad of practices I can teach you. I'm going to focus on the way I normally teach most of our users. I'm just going to take in this appointment right now inside of TechMetric. I'm going to indicate that this vehicle has arrived and I'm going to create the repair order. Once I've done this, this, this vehicle's got a repair order now. It's in this not started status. The way I have auto text me integrated with my demo site here is I actually am ignoring this column currently, but we are going to check in this vehicle. Uh, my, my ticket right here, you'll see it's still an appointment, even though I have it right in this estimate column. I'm going to show you what I do. I have this work not started label mapped to be my check in status. And when I go and create my initial job on this vehicle, I'm just going to add it from a can job. I have a courtesy inspection ready to go here and I'm going to authorize this. I like to use it this way. There's so many ways we could do this. I'm just going quickly through this example. But once I've done that sequence here in auto text me, or I'm sorry, in tech metric, I'm gonna pull this window off to the side a little bit here. You'll see that that, that vehicle is now in check-in in auto text me. And that's based on my actions done inside of tech metric. So this automatic status update ability, it's, it's very important to the process for a service advisor. I don't have to go and do it in this system. I just did something here and it caused this to happen. 
Now, the next thing that I'd like to point out on this is the way the users are mapped. And this is where it gets even further uh, into the two-way integration. We want to assign a technician to this ticket. Uh, dispatch is, is kingpin on anything. And it doesn't matter where you do the dispatching from, you could do it here inside of Techmetric or you could do it inside of Auto Text Me. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that actually right here through uh, the Auto Text Me screen. I have that vehicle for myself right here. I can go ahead and assign this over to my technician. And by doing so, when I go back into Techmetric, slide that over here again, you'll see that that technician is now assigned as well. This is two-way user mapping. At this point, to my knowledge, and I think I know all the integrations, this is the only integration that we have a two-way user mapping with where dispatch and prioritization can occur in either place. And that's, that's the same for us too, Craig. So um, as far as I know, there is nobody else that we've got a two-way integration like that. We have some two-way integrations with things like parts companies and so forth where they have to push that parts information in. Um, but no, um, you guys, the way the, you know, the pizza tracker here and, and following along with how everything is done, um, those notifications and, and assigning uh, the technician and so forth, nobody else. That is industry exclusive for us. Awesome. We Chris, appreciate that. We appreciate tracker. that you call the Domino's pizza tracker too. <laughs> Domino's has spent billions of dollars marketing that and we just borrow it every once in a while. It's, yeah, it it's just good. the best description. I mean, it you guys even have kind of the pointed look to the, you know, is the uh, air, is it's kind of a pizza shape. Uh, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to record this on record. I built this way before they built theirs, but that's okay. They spend billions of dollars in marketing on theirs. So, hey. <laughs> nice. Well, speaking of the workflow, this is one of those pieces that's uh, definitely the magic of auto text me. And in conjunction with this integration of, uh, of with tech metric, I'm going to show you how some of this looks for a technician and how it integrates with the automation that we put into the workflow. Uh, automation being kingpin uh, to technicians actions, like asking a technician, think about this for a second with workflows, service advisors are thinking like, oh man, I got to keep this all updated and I might not be able to update the customer on time or worse, I'm going to update the customer at the wrong time and it's going to make it seem like we took longer on something. How do we get out of that? I don't want to have to uh, worry about incorrect messages going to the clients. Well, we have a solution for you and that's with the automation and that is set up through your administrator it's called auto assign and update and auto text me and since any of the statuses in auto text me can be mapped to tech metric this becomes very powerful when a technician does things inside of dvi let's take a quick peek at that i'll show you what happens technician opens the dvi and using our real-time dashboard here you'll see what goes on i'm going to use mileage as an example because this also goes into tech metric all of this stuff plays together I think I'm sitting around 170,000 on this car. It's one of my old Honda Acura products that I keep around, acquired with a bad transmission. You see, I put the mileage in. I didn't have it. If I had put it in Techmetric, it would have already been there for me, by the way. But since I didn't have it, I entered it now from a technician login. And you'll notice it moved automatically forward to our inspection status and auto text me. And if I go back into uh, Techmetric and look at that same ticket, there's the odometer input I just did in auto text me real time as you do this. This is, and I think this is important, Craig. I love this feature, you know, developed, right? Because a lot of times, like you said, uh, somebody will start an inspection and they're done with the inspection before you even know that they started the inspection. So I think, you yep. know, some of the things that we've done here in real time have help you. So you don't have to click a button to remember, Oh, I forgot to put it in the inspection status. Right. I think that's the difference in doing business with people that have been in shops before. I mean, I was in a shop for seven years. Uh, Sunil, our CEO, ran his shop for 12 years. Craig, uh, 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 how long you've been in the business? Chris, how long you've been in the business? I mean, that's the difference because it's chaotic. I always tell people it's not like herding cats. It's like herding cats that are on fire all day, every day for 12 hours a day. And, you know, having those, that, that automation happening in front of you, having those notifications, people are like, oh, you didn't notice that? Well, no, I didn't. I'm not standing here looking at my computer, right? Um, yeah. I'm chasing a customer in the parking lot. I'm chasing down a parts uh, a vendor that dropped off. I'm chasing down a technician to make sure that this vehicle is ready. So having that stuff happening on cell phones, tablets, uh, desktops, all simultaneously, again, attributed to the cloud and, and real-time information updates um, through a cloud-based system, both of us. Um, and I think it's crucial uh, to making quick decisions. And PJ, you, you, you hit something I think is important. A lot of people look at technology as a distractor. And that absolutely should be something that helps you in your day-to-day -day job. And you said, hey, it would allow 
for things like this, you're not having to worry about when the inspection starts and watching your technicians. You're notified, you understand it started, and you can spend more time with the customer. And I think that's the focus, right? Technology should help you. It should not be a detractor from Hopefully. what you do. Yeah, definitely. Is. And it's, uh, I want to talk about it later on uh, as well. But Chris, you touched on something as well. I think that people have, have begun to want only quality time, not just time, right? So like my grandfather used to go hang out at the shop where he had his repairs done. He wanted a good waiting area. He wanted the most up-to-date magazines and newspapers. That doesn't happen anymore. We can talk about it later with customer notifications um, and how things are shared with them. But we need quality time in a short snippet, build the value and then move on. So we can talk about that later when we share. Yeah, that. no, good points. Yeah, see this conversation could go everywhere. I love this. <laughs> now with, uh, with the uh, integration too, uh, or the automation, when a technician does complete this form, I'm actually skipping a couple of cool things. I forgot to point out is the, uh, the reason for the visit actually does appear in auto text me if you have that inside of tech metric. So that customer concern is going to be uh, in there for the technician to acknowledge in, in the actual DVI form. We, we talk about quality, right? But what about the quality of these inspections? We don't want to have the main reason for the visit discussed in an inspection way down low and, and some uh, long list of items that we discovered. We want to draw attention to that right up front with the customer, like, here's what we're doing that addresses the thing you asked us to look at. <laughs> right. And in tech metric, Craig, as well, whenever they enter in a customer, in, you know, um, a concern uh, in the in the system that I used to use in my shop, you know, my service writer would write, write out a paragraph, right? It'd be four sentences that nobody ever paid attention to. All they looked at was the very first thing and the other three never got addressed. So in tech metric, when you enter each customer concern, it creates a bulleted list. Each one is its own line item and each one creates an additional job and the additional customer concern that we want to inspect uh, rather than writing out one big long story. It sounds kind of silly, but I see that from a lot of the old server based systems and, and uh, legacy systems. Um, and it's just this is just a different way of doing it. In my opinion, it's definitely better because technicians see those bullet pointed lists. They don't write a you know, read a four uh, uh, sentence paragraph. Yeah, this this helps. This is one of those things that we prevent that awkward uh, moment where a technician comes back from a road test or has to come and stand there at the counter and talk to the service advisor about getting more details about why the car is in and what it is they're supposed to be looking for. We used to we used to hate that in transmission shop world. It was always the intermittent problems, especially the more details a service advisor can put into a place like this. It's going to be right there at the fingertips for the technician. It's powerful. So now I'm going to do uh, it's funny, one other... Craig, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share, I'm not going to share these with the group, but look, this is an electrical symptom sheet. This is a steering suspension sheet. This is a heating air conditioning sheet. This is the question that breaks symptoms, getting those descriptions, making sure uh, everything gets, and, and people, why are you holding paper right now? But you're absolutely right. That questioning up front is critical. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, the sheets of paper is how we used to have to do it. If it wasn't printed on the page, you would have to uh, probably go write it down for the technician at some point. A lot of shops out there are not paperless right now. And this is something that we should discuss a little bit more as we move in th through this as well, because you can be fully paperless uh, with TechMetric, with AutoTextMe, and certainly with the combination of the two, even easier than ever before. And uh, so let's uh, let's uh, do one thing here. I want to finish that inspection sheet for my technician. I want to show you what happens with automation. When a tech completes an inspection, he's going to mark it completed. And it automatically moves forward again in the workflow and auto text me. And this is where I start to have a lot more fun with the inspections because you can push these straight into tech metric. I'm actually going to use a, a different vehicle for this particular piece here. Uh, I'm going to go pop into the Joe Palooka vehicle because I have a few things canned and ready to go for this guy. I have an inspection pre-built for this. Uh, I could talk for a while on a few things. Actually, there is one job I wanted to pop on here. I wanted to pop a transmission fluid uh, recommendation on here. And of course, we could add pictures and everything else. Um, I'm just going to add one picture just for, for making sure I have a picture to import. Because what we're going to do with this one is we're going to send this into... Tech metric and oh, I didn't put my mileage in on this one. Let's do that. We can require certain inputs. That is a nominal example of why you have required inputs. <laughs> what shop owner would not like to see the mileage the last time it was in? I forgot to address the reason for the visit too. See, I'm moving too fast now. 
I did address it. It's in the sway bar links. Actually, cool thing you can do here too and auto tags me if we pop in there. We can actually tag the main concern to a line item in the inspection so it's even more clear in our DVI report. Uh, this will this will come in later. But let's go into uh, completing that. And then I'm actually what the button I want to push here is the push to DV, uh, push DVI to tech metric. This is the uh, this is the button that makes doing inspections and auto text me really uh, easy uh, for tech metric users. Uh, because when I go back to uh, that Joe Paluca ticket now, we'll switch gears to this nice 2002 Honda Odyssey. I can't do these presentations without using my minivan. I have to. <laughs> we go right to that inspection tab and everything that I did click on inside of that inspection sheet in auto text me is going to be in here, including that transmission recommendation I just did. The images are going to be in here as well. Any of the notes. And this is where performing this inspection, we want to get these up. We can work on this on the estimate. You hit the pencil, hit save, and now anything marked red or yellow in that auto text me DVI is going to be here as a tech concern. I can carry that straight over to my estimate and I can build an estimate pretty fast when I know how I want to go through this. So like- now, Craig, yeah. Craig, before we jump off of the screen, perfect. You, you clicked on the three dots there. Oh, yeah. You know, we you can do a number of things, right? If you, you don't want to scare a customer off, we're not trying to quote um, yeah. uh, six different lines right here. We might run the customer off. We can do a number of things. You can grab a canned job that's already yep. built. Um, you know, if it's an LOF and uh, rotate, right? Or a uh, uh, well, change go. of the five nice to drain and fill. Yeah. Yep. Or you can build a custom quote, or you could carry everything over, right? You could yeah. carry absolutely copy everything. Copy the over. estimate button. Yep. yep. With the click of one button. So now you could take, you can take one, you can take six, and you can take anything in between at the click of a button. Uh, in the time that I've said all of this, Craig has built. Uh, two estimates to the tune of, you know, what, $300, $400, and he's still got one custom one to build as well. So yeah. um, what was that, 30 seconds? Call it 60. Um, yeah, you know, I could go quicker even. Today, uh, we're here to help. So <laughs> I've been accused of having a ninja mouse a few times in these, so I could have gone faster if you wanted to, but then people are like, what'd you do? <laughs> uh, we told him not to drink Red Bull before this <laughs> webinar, because if not, we would not be able to understand him. He would be a blur right now. <laughs> So this is this is exactly what I like about having the ability to push DVI results in because you can build these estimates so fast. And this is where the part of the sales process comes in that I like the most. Uh, now that the inspection is done, that, that the estimate is completed, when we go right into auto text me here, we can send this to the customer. We do this from auto text me. We do communicate from that two-way communication piece in auto text me the entire time. So everything we send, we're sending through here. Customer is going to receive that inspection. What I also enjoy doing is updating the workflow from here to this next step. Well, I'll wait for my client to actually view the inspection. We show you all that sort of thing when, whenever we're, we're in auto text. We can show you also what, what the client has looked at inside of the inspection too. Before you even start trying to deal with the sales process, you'll know if they've consumed the data that we've provided for them. And what I think uh, that report right there, going back to PJ's earlier point, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the misconception, this drove me crazy. Um, you know, this is why it's something we put in PJ because I am a shop owner, right? There's the, the oh, if you take 15 pictures of a vehicle, it's gonna sell this much more. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. When we put in this, where you can actually see what they're clicking on, how much view time they're spending in the different sections, what we started to notice was half of the pictures that we would take in my shops weren't being viewed. A lot of times they wouldn't view the good items section. They would go straight to the negative and then they would click on a couple and then they would call us. So what does that mean? What does that give your chance for you to do at your shop? You can train your service advisors to say, hey, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, I realize we sent you this digital inspection and there was more stuff for you to consume. So let me take a couple of minutes to show you how to consume this data for the next time when you come in. So it prepares you, or if they looked at everything and they sat on one particular image for quite some time or one particular thing for quite some time, there's a higher probability that they're very concerned about that. So there's a lot of tells in this insight that I think goes very deep into your consumer and how you can how you can speak with your consumer and how you can solve their problems and help them, right? Just not by sending random things to them. Totally. Sometimes people don't know what that link is and they don't know how to navigate. 
the let me illustrate this too. because and pj you're going to want to talk about the electronic authorization for me in a second i'm going to show you this uh, the way i i trigger this conversation with the customer is i move this to waiting on approval or if i'm in tech metric let's pull that back on uh, my other screen here i slid it off somewhere where did i put my other other screen here we go right here so actually this is right where i want it because i want to show you what happens when i'm when i'm ready to have this conversation with the customer if i wanted to change the status here in tech metric which i can do when it's in this work in progress column i hit set status and i mapped my waiting on approval status over here to waiting on customer and so if i move it to waiting on customer this is the way i trigger that text message to them that we want to talk about the repairs that we've estimated now and people receive a text message in an average of three minutes. So I, I feel like it's really less. I think that average is skewed by some people who don't check text messages and there are very few of them. And they have like several days where a text message went by. Most people that I've seen and we track this in auto text me, they look at text messages the same minute that you sent it. You can't leave a voicemail that fast when you call a customer to ask them if they're ready to talk about repairs, right? So now we've told them we're ready to take care of these repairs. They're going to call us for one of the few phone calls I actually do want to get. And I want to have a way for them to authorize these forms that's better than the verbal that I've been doing over the phone for years. And so we do send the tech metric authorization link right from auto text me using a predefined text with that bracketed code. When we send that to the customer, he receives the link the same way that he would have received it if you had shared this directly from tech metric as well. So that happens right from this single dialogue point for auto text me users. If I show you what that looks like in that text thread, he receives this link and we're going to cheat here. I'm going to open this up in a fresh tab and we have this screen. So PJ. that's exactly what the customer is going to receive on their cell phone. Um, all of this is customizable as well. Keith or uh, Craig, excuse me, if you'll um, uh, expand that uh, error yeah. there. Um, depending on how you want to, and also state requirements too, um, you can show parts, labor, labor hours. You can even customize this for a singular RO, right? If you have your uh, shop set up to just show package pricing, that's fine. But you have that one customer that comes in that you know that they're going to want to see all that detail. You can change it right there in the RO without even affecting the entire shop. Um, and you can even make an estimate look different than a final invoice. So um, this is something that, that, that all of us guys here on this call have talked about before, but trust and transparency, right? Trust through transparency, really and truly. Um, showing customers uh, you know, I talked about the way my grandfather used to go to his auto repair shop and, and he knew about those vehicles and he, he just wanted to, he had the money to let someone else take care of it, but he knew how to do pretty much anything he took it in for. That's not the clientele that we're selling to anymore. They just don't, they don't know about them. They don't care about them. This is something I talk about in my, my sales training webinars um, about stop selling parts and labor and make more profit, right? You don't sell parts and labor. The guy down the street sells parts and labor. You sell parts and labor. What is your unique product? Uh, Chris touched on it earlier. Um, this is not to replace a service advisor. I have so many service advisors that they're reluctant to this. They're like, well, you can't just digitally communicate with customers. Well, some you can, but many you cannot. This is just a supplement to create that transparency and take something that nobody knows about. They don't know about ball joints. They don't know how to replace them themselves. They just know that they need them and they just know that they're expensive. How do we get them to say yes? So Chris touched on it. They immediately go towards what's marked in red. They immediately go to what you have pictures and videos of. The customer then at that point, like Chris said, spending a lot of time looking at it, they are mentally selling for the shop owner. They don't realize it, but they are mentally justifying that. Their eyes go to the red. They look at the video of that wheel wobbling and they know wheels probably shouldn't wobble. They should roll straight. Well, they're starting to figure out that shouldn't happen. Now, how much does it cost? They've done all the value building by using this tool that created that trust and transparency. Now they're just asking you, is it a fair price? They're not going to ask your labor rate. They're not going to ask to go down the road. They're going to ask you, when can you have it done and what will it cost me? So all that selling was just done at the click of a button that shared the DVI and shared the estimate to the customer and use that as a tool for the service advisor to go over it with the customer. But it, it eliminates a lot of those questions and builds value very, very quickly. PJ, I had two guys at this last shop that we purchased that uh, were supposed to be using digital inspections and old digital workflow process and refused to. Uh, before they came to workforce. And of course, I said, no, it's something you have to do. Um, once they started using it, uh, one of the guys who runs the shop, 17 years experience, he said, oh my God, I, I, I do not know why I hesitated before this. 
because this is the easiest sell that I could ever make with the pictures, the communication. It just makes it extremely easy. Now, I also want to address one thing that PJ said as well, that this won't replace uh, your service advisor. Um, Amazon, I'm sure they're working on replacing your service advisor as we speak, but we are not working on <laughs> replacing. I wouldn't be surprised. It's, you know, Amazon does everything right. So why would they not have a service for that? In, in all seriousness, it actually does replace a service advisor for me because my shop tries to contact me all the time. Um, and I, I, I talked about this with you guys before. They try to call me. I can't stop. I'm on the phone doing webinars like this, doing sales calls, doing training calls. They can't reach me. They text me. Craig hit the nail on the head. One minute I can review it, approve, declined, and send it back to them. They, I took my wife's car in. I get the final invoice. And I took it in for an oil change, tire rotation, top off fluids, check the filters, right? No DVI. I picked up the phone and called them. What's going on? Where is my DVI? My expectations have been set. And I truly believe that every shop, I don't care if they're coming in for a state inspection, if they're coming in for an oil change, if they're coming in to check the tire balance, uh, I, whatever. You know, if you're going to lift that car up at all, there should be some form of an inspection. It could be a five point, 15 point, 25 point, but cater it to your crowd because 100% of vehicles should be inspected. Just if nothing else for just some coverage, right? You don't want the car to leave and it be unsafe, right? Why didn't you do that? But there's opportunities there that the customer, you're like an attorney, you advise them of what you believe they should do. It is their choice if they choose to do those repairs, but be their attorney, just give them the information. People are smart enough to absorb that and make a decision off of it. So I called them, my expectations were set that every time my wife's car goes in there and all of my vehicles, I get an, a DVI, I know the condition, and I, my expectations were set. If you start doing that, your customers are, again, asking for those sales tools. They are wanting to see that every single time. You're not shoving an appointment. And this is not just for millennials. People do this all the time. Oh, this is just for the millennials, right, and younger? Oh, I no, it's not, <laughs> right? I mean, grandparents are, are, use, are FaceTiming with their grandkids and so forth, right? I mean, it's not, there is not an age minimum or maximum. It's nothing like that. It's just trust and transparency. Everybody's got a smartphone. They're going to look at it in 60 seconds, speed up their life, create quality of life. That's what we're trying to do here. Absolutely. We're making informed Amen. buying decisions possible. Right? See, I, I had a similar situation too. I had brake pads worn out of my van. I had done my own timing belt recently in my garage. I didn't pull the wheels off. I had cruise control issue being addressed and they, they looked at the brakes for me and said, Hey, we should take care of that before you hit head North in Michigan thousand mile trip to the Keweenaw Peninsula way North. It was a great time. I didn't think my brake pads were a necessary place in my mind. I just took care of those. And I you better send me a picture. <laughs> right? They sent me the picture and they were, they were less than one millimeter left on, on the leading edge on, on the things. It's like, yep. Okay. No brainer. I don't have a choice. Take care of that. Thank you. <laughs> it's pictures, man. I won't sell work without them anymore. Well, yeah. and, and it's interesting. People are turned off by salespeople in, in general, right? I mean, when you walk into a store of any kind or some lot and somebody says, may I help you? Your immediate reaction is no. Yep. Once again, with these digital yep. tools, you have this ability to be transparent, send information, send pictures, and prepare mentally, like PJ said, your consumer for what it is. Because what people hate about auto repair is the unknown. But if you can make it more known and more transparent, that makes that sell a little bit easier. It makes them feel a little bit better about the purchase they're about to make. Because it is a negative purchase environment. It is. And, it, and it's a push product. This isn't Apple. This isn't the Apple store. I have a generation four. I need a generation five. I don't know why, because they do the same thing, but this one has the retinal scan. So I'm going to spend a thousand dollars. Nobody has a thousand dollars to spend on their vehicle. So I think that transparency that gets created, giving them that time to digest it versus your service advisor having 30 seconds on the phone to explain seven items that need to be addressed. That's yeah. you're, you're setting them up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I love that you mentioned the negative sales environment. We have that tool where we track the sentiment analysis of on our text messages in auto text me. And it, it, it's always funny to me how many times it's uh, the word fixed, repair, and all that is used in auto repair shop and how the sentiment analysis of that is, it, it is a negative sentiment. And what more proof do you need how frequently those terms are being used? It is negative. And we want to put that in a positive light, obviously. Now, in this case, we've authorized this job 
our technicians been notified, we do want to order some parts. And this is a part of the process that, that I always felt like needed some love. And we've really given it that uh, between TechMetric and Auto Text Me. Notice I moved it in that status for needing to order parts. And I don't know if you guys have a lot of shops that are doing this. Maybe Chris, yours are, uh, PJ, yours. But having a parts manager in the shop, the shops that are doing that, the process goes so much smoother. I love it. And this is pretty cool too, because you actually filter this out and auto text me. And if you have a parts manager and he wants to focus on anything that needs to be ordered, that's a great spot to be able to look. Now, TechMetric handles this really well. If I uh, pop that back open here, you'll open this order and you can see right on the main screen here on the estimate. Excuse yep. Me. Two things, Craig. Um, there's there, We can do the same thing inside of TechMetric. So I am seeing some shops, a lot of the larger shops, I'm starting to see some uh, dedicated parts people, which I think is fantastic because yeah. parts, you, I mean, it, it, you, you don't make as much as labor, but you still, it's a profit center. Uh, I think it should be treated with equal um, levels of attention, but uh, from the job board, you can sort the entire job board um, on by, by uh, status, click on the RO status and you, you want to do a drop down. Uh, either one, by the way, Craig's showing you multiple views. So you can click on need to order parts and you can see everything where we are Brilliant. needing to order parts. Go to the shop dashboard on the top left as well, Craig. Um, oh, in okay. the sh uh, shop dashboard, oh, oh. top very top left, just in the word tech metric. This right here is actually showing you everything in real time. And as far as we know, this is an industry exclusive as well. Uh, TechMetric does, it, you know, being a cloud-based system, we figured out uh, a way, spent a lot of time on it to show real-time reporting. Here is e everything that's sitting in your shop. You see both job board and posted repair orders. So not only what you have posted so far today, but if nobody else came in today, how much money would we generate? You can also see below that each and every RO and the status that they are sitting in. So there's three different places here that we can see, you know, if I'm the parts guy, I know who's waiting on me and how many dollars the business uh, could be losing or I am delaying by not taking care of my job. So that's a very good point. Um, uh, again, creating those efficiencies. We didn't chase around. Hey, does anybody need parts order? Blah, blah, blah. You know it. It's sitting right here in front of you. Exactly. Yeah, and auto text me, there's been the work order parts list. And when a job's authorized as well, you can see here, this is what got integrated with uh, TechMetric. And so if I take these uh, parts, I'm just going to make a phone order for everything. We have this really great Acme parts and more vendor, and they're going to give us all the stuff we need. And we're going to go ahead and save that order. We could probably talk for a lot longer on on all that, but yeah, we're talking integration. So we'll, we'll just show how it's ordered here. And then when this is, when this ticket's been saved, that updates auto text me. So when I pull that back over here, refresh that you'll see, I have all those parts as ordered. Same with arrived. When these parts are actually received, if I want to go ahead and mark this as received, I can go ahead and do that. And then same thing here, when I come back to auto text me and I refresh this, it does show as arrived. And that's important because as a technician, when you're opening this up on your tablet, we want to make sure first off the status is actually uh, pertinent to this vehicle. If Joe Paluca is my priority that the service advisor wants, we can show whether we're waiting for parts. This would synchronize with auto text me's uh, status sync integration with TechMetric. But I also move it into this status. I, I use this as an internal piece, this waiting on technician status. And then if I do have this as the next priority for that technician, I can do that very easily here. And now my technician, his view, waiting on tech, it's his next priority. He can then move it in if he wants to the servicing status. This is the one time I actually do ask the, uh, the technician to click on that. He opens the work order. And if you are using Auto Text Me's work order, this is completely integrated with TechMetric. You'll be able to see every job, every single description on each of these items. We'll make this easier for you to view on this screen. We can show everything. We'll see parts. We'll see parts quantity, part numbers, whether it's arrived or not, or if it had just been ordered but has not arrived, that'll also be here for you. And I know there's another view for technicians in TechMetric as well. Uh, most of the auto text me users that I'm using, uh, a lot of the technicians, a good percentage of them anyway, are using auto text me entirely. And that's possible, again, because of the integration. As I click these jobs complete, another thing happens inside of TechMetric. We're going to pop in here, go into that actual ticket for Joe Paluca on the work in progress screen. 
as jobs are marked complete and auto text me, they are marked complete here as well. And I like this on this job board view. You get that little slice of the pie view there. And the same is true for the, the view and auto text me. And I, I meant to have these all in one tab. I should have, here we go. Now I can keep myself organized. This, I is, use this is also screen. something that, that Chris talked about earlier. And, and um, you know, anyone that's on this call and anyone that's in the decision making process for either looking at tech metric, looking at auto text me or both of them, they're in a position because they're a risk taker, they're a harder worker, they're more interested in fine tuning the business and making it better across the board. Um, you know, what Chris talked about earlier with a, a couple of technicians that refused to do this, didn't want to do it, you will always get that feedback. Oh, it takes longer to do a DVI than it does for pencil and paper. And I already check all those things. Well, really, why is across the nation, why, do, why does the ARO go up? The average repair order increases across the US in any shop, any market, it doesn't matter when you start doing DVI. Is that because you did everything the exact same way when you're on paper? Probably not. Um, and I will tell you, it's, it's, it's something that I come up against all the time, right? And I, and I always have to remind the managers and the shop owners that you're the entrepreneur, you're the risk taker, it's your vision. You have to grab that bull by the horns and lead it. And when you do, the proof is in the pudding. Does it happen overnight? Actually, sometimes yes. But usually by that 60 to 90 day mark where you've dialed in those processes, they understand the value, they start buying into it both mentally and in practice. Mm -hmm. It's all shown in the numbers. It's shown yep. in the average repair order. It's shown in the gross profit margins. Um, it's, it's shown in customer satisfaction. And oh, by the way, you can also track it. Not every job sells, right? DVI and these, and these digital assets are all supplements. They don't all sell. Well, how did you track those pencil and paper um, uh, inspections that you used to do? How did you track those yeah. old um, um, estimates that you did? And how did you follow up on them efficiently, right? Jump into the reports and tech metric, go to your decline jobs, and you can see every customer that declined every line of every RO, not just the RO, each and every job, I could run that report in 10 seconds, right? So this is not just about just selling it. It's also the follow-up process, right? How do we share that information over to your marketing company so that they can do follow-up on your behalf? Hey, Mr. Smith, I saw that we recommended breaks for you last week. I saw that you didn't take care of that. Here's a $25 coupon. We don't want them to go somewhere else, right? Once we lose them, now we're going to have that cost of acquisition to get them back in the door, right? Because Joe's garage down the street might not come back, right? They're going to go down there. They're not going to come back to Chris's garage. Let's keep them here. That was worth $25 all day. You can't do that with a paper inspection. You can't do that with a phone estimate. Put this stuff into the system, track it, no matter how simple and how small it is, decline. Accountability piece to it, right? Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And this, is, this is, I've submitted this work order as my technician in my, in my uh, fake tablet here. And, and even that is tracked inside of TechMetric as well. We know when that repair order was marked complete. And that is shown in, entirely in here. Essentially, with, with the workflow automation and auto text me, we've hit that complete work button for you, uh, which causes the vehicle to move into the completed work column. Uh, it's, it's one of those pieces that allows for a paperless process, again, not to require extra steps for our service advisors, really even for our technicians at all. And anyone who, who doesn't have that process working for you, well, that's why the support team for either of these companies are, are here. We know the solutions can do what you want it to do. Make sure you reach out for help if you have any kind of problem with that, because I know for a fact uh, the people on my team are fantastic. And I know for a fact the people on the tech metric team are also fantastic and responsive. We do we do kind of pride ourselves in customer satisfaction. So, um, yeah, chat, email, phone calls. Um, um, it's, you know, eight to eight. Um, you, you can't beat that. Pick up the phone and call us if you want to. There's so many self-help resources too. I always tell shop owners, you don't make money by calling us, um, but we're happy to talk to you anytime you want to. Absolutely. <laughs> so, hey, we've gone pretty much end to end with a couple different tickets. We've talked DVI, we've talked work order. We haven't talked about quality control, but that's- uh, that's Quality all. control, you know, PJ mentioned something on follow-up. So you might want to touch on follow-up just real quick, the rainy day sure. folder. Um, yeah, let's really do that real fast since he did, because it's good to track what was mm -hmm. what was done and what was not done. And then being able to re 
assess those and resend those to your consumer for uh, the rainy day. We're basically, in essence, what we call the rainy day folder. That's saving those deferred items for a day when it's raining. So you mm -hmm. typically call. Um, we've automated this in our system as well. Yeah. In just a couple of clicks, I've sent an inspection to the client that had outstanding items that still need to be approved. And I tracked when they were last notified. So I don't continually bombard this individual with other things. You can't do that with a piece of paper. And that's Chris just touched on a success story that I have from multiple customers, everybody that, you know, not to talk about COVID and everything that's happened, but everyone that I've talked to that had success during that said it was because they were able to track what we didn't get to do uh, when customers didn't have time, they couldn't get their vehicle in and et cetera. That's what plugged everyone and got them through. And I, and Rainy I, 2020 guys. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's a good description. Um, but at the end of the day, I said, if we did that during COVID, why aren't we doing that all the time though? There should be an automated process, right? I, I, I told people I used to do, I used to track decline jobs and every once a week, usually on a Tuesday, Mondays are insane. But on a Tuesday, I would call the customer that declined worked in the previous week. Hey, this is PJ, you know, I'm the boss here. And so I always want to follow up with every customer just to make sure that we did everything right. It's always people, price or product every single time. Oh, did you not like Craig, my service advisor? No, we love Craig. He's amazing. Oh, did you not like the type of brake pads that we quoted you? I have absolutely no clue what kind of brake pad you quoted me, and I don't know which ones are good. Did you not like the price? Well, right now, it's just not really a good time. Hey, I completely understand that, but at least we zeroed it in. It could be the service advisor, right? Chris, Chris may find out that he's got a bad apple somewhere in the shop. Yeah, that guy was rude. He, he acted like he was too busy for me. It was the person. You had the sale. This person just needs a little bit of extra training on how to talk to a customer and portray that value. But you can dial that in. What's a better use of any shop owner or shop manager's time than to once a week speak with every single one of those? Well, how are those tracked on pen and paper? How is that tracked in your legacy system? It's tracked right here in front of you. No one has to go through additional effort either to actually have that information at their fingertips. Yeah, and you hit on a piece that, that I, I not showing in our, our current demo site over here. I don't have that feature toggled on here. I do actually, um, now that I just toggled it on, you can actually see customer feedback. So if they didn't like something to visit and they, they told you as such, I have an example here on my other site here too, where if I click this open, I can see internal feedback that a client has also given me. We can actually track that sort of thing with a service advisor. And we have that in a report as well. Um, and uh, there's probably, well, probably we should probably do a, one of these calls and just talk about reports the entire time, PJ, between the two systems. I, I'd like to see more on some of the tech metric stuff too. Uh, but if I wanted to look uh, and auto text me, for example, last few days, my admin user has had these comments come back in. Uh, this is a neat piece and uh, I'd love to spend more time talking about that. But just to build on PJ's um, talking point for this is that there is a digital trail for everything that you do. And this data is yours for you to use, right? The shop's data. And that's, that's something that we feel very strongly on as well, preserving that for you for all time. Absolutely. Craig, I think we're pretty much running up on our time. So was there any uh, questions that came in, uh, Scott? Um, now we got to Are any board. questions? We had a clear board. God, Lee, we did so doggone good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of quality control, I, I, it's funny. At one of my shops, they do a really good job of quality control. They mark the items. It, quality control sheet is a sheet where you can mark um, the exit of the vehicle to make sure that uh, things are getting done. It's one of the things that we have that most people don't have. A lot of times they'll use an inspection for it, but to make sure that car is delivered better than what it came in. And I think that's, it's a statement that all shops should make, right? You want that car to leave better than what it came in. You wanna make sure that you're double checking the work of the people who have done the work and a quality control is something that you can do very well. One of my shops tracks it very well. The other one, they don't, they don't track it as well. And you know what they, they always tell me, Craig, they always say, well, golly, we must've been perfect that week. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm sure the customers will let you know if that wasn't true, right? <laughs> the customers always let me know. <laughs> they let me know. <laughs> well, it's just a good way to keep track of, you know, and I like the whole Kaizen, Toyota philosophy, Lean Six Sigma. You know, we're trying to improve our process and we're not in manufacturing. So we really can't, you know, we can't apply some lean processes and thoughts, but Toyota celebrates when they find 
waste improve things or they find issues in their manufacturing defects. So I think quality control and what we do in our industry should be should be celebrated that you find these things and not your tech, not your not your customers, that you're actually looking over the work of your technicians and making sure that you know it's a quality products going back. I we don't want to get PJ, yeah. you know, PJ went and got an old change. And they did the old change to the air filter and, and PJ's like, all right, I like these guys because they're going to be my, they, my customer now because they're going to be digital. But then he ran his hand over the steering wheel and there's a big glob of grease on his steering wheel. Guess what? P PJ's, he might go back. He might. Uh, he might. He might go back a time or two, but that happens three or four times. PJ's done. So I think quality control is something that's underrated in this industry as well. So I know you kind of skipped over it, but I just want to put it. Yeah, we went, we went through that pretty quick. I'm just going to do one thing that I do like showing is uh, when you take payment on a ticket, the best part of the job. Now, I, I should have moved that to the ready status already and let my customer know their vehicle's ready to pick up. Uh, taking payment, you can do this. Uh, I know Techmetric has uh, a text to pay natively. We also have that in auto text me, uh, depending on how you want to do that. Once you do take payment inside of Techmetric, however you decide to do that, I'll pay the full amount here. And I'm gonna close that. I wanna make sure I show the uh, real-time dashboard doing this. I'm gonna pay and post. Pay and post causes that to automatically refresh, drops that ticket right from the board. So this prevents the auto text me screen from becoming cluttered. Automatically closing the ticket when it's posted. Thank you very much. It's all about getting everything quickly, right? Make mm -hmm. it easy for the customer to pay. There's no chasing money. Um, yeah, that's there's nothing Our wrong with that. Text to pay is a whole topic of itself. Uh, yeah. Just outstanding ability. I hated that conversation at the end of the day with a client where they're probably driving their car and trying to read me this this <laughs> long number on. on oh, it just felt horrible. I hated it. It's not the way I wanted my experience with the client to end, right? And I think, I think, you know, we touched on this earlier and I think it needs to be emphasized. You know, you have your check in box where you drop your keys. A lot of shops now have the, the speed box or these checkout box, these little boxes where you can put the keys and give them a little code. You could text them. And now really, what really what it is, I think it goes back to PJ, right? Everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. So if, if you have somebody who is busy because they got to work, 80 hours a week, but the quality time they want to spend is with their family and you can make it convenient for them to drop off their car after hours, pick it up after hours and give them 30 more minutes with their family because they don't have to worry about checking out at your counter, worry about getting the keys. You can do it all digitally. I think you've actually improved their life just a little bit more. So I think it's about convenience of, of a customer as well, right? And understanding that everybody's, everybody's busy. Um, and having those quality conversations. I love it, PJ, when you said, yeah, people come in. And we still have people come in our shop and, and want to chat, chit chat for a while. And we'll, we'll, we'll take care of them. But I can't tell you countless numbers of times where we've dealt with a, an exec or somebody who just doesn't, they, they, no offense, they just don't want to talk to us. Yeah. And I have none taken. If they don't want to see my my face that's made for Radio 2, then I have no problem with well, that. Well, it's about, it's about that quality. It's a quality transaction, but it does need to happen in an expedited manner, right? We've all, we've all got so many distractions coming at us from so many different ways. My gosh, I have to turn off notifications and whatnot on all my devices <laughs> just so I can have time with my wife and my family and enjoy that time. But we're all figuring out ways to prioritize that time. I, I do think that there is value in those where we want to have that that interaction but think about it almost like fast casual dining right you can run to mcdonald's and you can grab a burger and fries in about the same amount of time that you might be able to go to chick-fil-a chipotle you might even spend a smidge more time you're also going to spend a little bit more money at those other two that i just named off and think about others right five guys you name it right but all of those are more like fast casual dining a little bit more experience a little bit more money but I get what I want and I get more quality than I did if I may have gone to Burger King or McDonald's or something like that. I'm not speaking ill of them. I'm just saying it's two different products. People are willing to have that little bit better experience and they're willing to pay a little bit for it. So you're not getting into these discussions uh, about um, uh, price, you know, how much are you charging for the parts, how much you're charging for your labor. It just turns into building value and when can you get it done? Right. And if you're creating that value, they're willing to do it. We, I talk about this in some of the sales trainings of creating almost a fast, casual dining experience in and out, higher quality, happy customer, move on. You got it. Beautiful. Absolutely. Guys, we followed the outline. All right. There's one thing. 
one thing only that I wanted to show that I didn't show promise time out in tech metric or you put it in auto text me doesn't matter where you make it guess what two-way status sync massive it's Look a massively that. important thing as well in managing customers expectations i could not tell you how many friday afternoons where i'm the somehow the only person in the shop that remembered did you get mrs smith's car done she's leaving with the whole family to go to florida this weekend oh no i didn't know that was important how yep. How did you not know that that was important? It's been on your tray for two days, right? It's been on your, on your roller cart for two days. And, you know, seeing it here, seeing in tech metric, if they've missed that time frame, right? If you say, if it's due by five, say that it's due by noon on Friday, it'll turn red right there. In front yeah, of them. Same like, oh not. yeah, I totally completely yep. forgot about that. Play some mind games with them. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's a great thing. I'm glad we, that piece was recent. I forget when that was put in a couple of weeks ago, I think, but. Good stuff, good stuff coming all the time. So that's why we like to have these webinars, keep this conversation alive. We'd like to see any questions come in. You all know how to reach our support departments. Don't be shy in reaching out. This is, uh, this is an evolving process. We wanna keep you on the leading edge the entire time. Any closing comments, guys, go ahead. Man, no, I'm great. This was awesome. And I, I love talking about this stuff. Any, anytime we can, uh, of course, reach out to any of us at TechMetric uh, or me personally. I'm, I'm here to help. If it's just for to, to bend my ear, right? Ask me what I've had success with or what other shop owners are having success with. I'm happy to impart that. Um, but uh, it's about making the industry better. And we're always here to do that. Rock solid. Man, thank you, PJ. We really appreciate you guys doing this with us. And thank you, Craig, for hosting. Hey, guess what? You get to keep your job for another day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. We'll see Thanks, you all. Sign off. Catch you all later. Bye-bye.